Hi, my name is Fatima and I'm talking to you from Ontario, Canada. Um, it's the first episode of the year, even though it's the 30th of January, but I want to wish you all a memorable 2022. I, that's the word for me this year, memorable. I want this year to be special and I think I'm the only one who can make it special. So that's my main goal in the year. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody that subscribed uh, to the channel. It's very motivating for me to have new subscribers. Um, I'm grateful for you being watching me today. And uh, if you can subscribe, if you haven't yet, I appreciate that very much. Um, it's been a crazy time here in Canada. We have had, I think, a lot of uh, our temperatures the past three weeks have been between minus 20 and minus 30, sometimes with the windshield a little bit more. Uh, but it's been really bad. I feel sorry for the dogs because they have to go out uh, in the cold at least three or four times. And sometimes I go with them because they don't want to go out. They will go out and then they come back, but they need to. So I'll go and stay with them and then they feel more motivated to, <laughs> to do their business there. Um, out of that, next week I'm going to Brazil. I'm going to be there for three weeks, so I'm excited. Uh, last time I seen my family, my siblings and my, my family, my son, was in 2019 before the COVID thing. So I'm a little bit anxious because nowadays we have to do our tests before uh, the day we are getting into the plane. And so it's, it's a little bit um, stressing because we don't know if everything is going to be okay or not. I work from home. I hardly ever leave the house. And if I leave, I stay in the car most of the time. But you never know, right? So... So I'm a little bit edgy about this trip, but it's going to be great. I, I need to see my, my siblings and my son and my grandson. So I'm happy I'm going. Um, so I'll start talking about knitting. Um, and one of the thing is that one of the reasons for this podcast to be so late is because we decided to start painting the house last year and we just finished painting the wool room and that was great because um, I had to take everything out of the wool room and and I was thinking ways to make it uh, more organized and to fit my stuff in a way that it was not always cramped and messed so um, we organize it this way we got some IKEA shelves that helped a lot and it's very functional I, I really like it and one of the good things when you when you take all your stash away and you can see everything that you have so I I put all the fat not all but almost all the fiber I have spun on the on the wall and and then you can have an idea of what you can do or not right so I'm thinking maybe blankets or socks. For socks, I have separate this, this basket with yarn that I have hand spun thinking of socks. Because when I don't have a purpose for, for some fiber, I always think I'll make socks. So I spin them worsted and at least three ply. So... So I have this basket here and I have other baskets of things that I have spun throughout the years that I'm going to find uh, I use. So, so it was good. Another good thing about from time to time cleaning or your stash is that a moss doesn't like that you do cleaning or that you move the things. So it's a good time for you to check if there was um, any cleaning or not. There is some sound in the background and that's my daughter cooking dinner. 
So I'm very grateful because I love when people cook food for me. So, you know, I'm not bothered by that. I hope you're not neither because I'm grateful and happy. Okay, so the only problem with uh, reorganizing the stash is that I feel tempted to do, oh, I want to use this yarn, I want to do that, and I can't, I have to finish my project. So last year, uh, in my last episode, I, I mentioned that I wanted to do 50 we 52 weeks of socks. Um, to make it a little bit harsher, I decided to do it retroactive to beginning of December so that I would have um, 52 socks by, by end of November this year. And, and I said I'm not going to stress too much, but I am a very goal-oriented person. And so I get stressed if I don't achieve my goals. But, um, and, and the reason for the 52 weeks of socks is, first, I love socks. Second, I have a lot of yarn, as you saw, that uh, I spun for socks. And third, I like to make socks in different, um, with different structures and learn new things. So that has been great, and I'm doing that. So in December, I finished this pair of socks that I was supposed to, to do them with double knitting. I didn't do double knitting because I thought that was going to be too risky and there was really not a good reason for me to do that. They are mirror socks, I do love it. And it's from uh, the book from Anne Bud that I have in my, in my tablet and I'm going to try to make most of them. Then the second one that I finished, and, and that's the thing, I, I feel like I cheat a little bit because uh, I'm not doing all the socks with the book and the pattern, but I'm using my yarn. Um, so it's, it's a good cheating because like this is a vanilla sock. The only difference that I made, I did uh, one a ribbon, one, one pearl, one neat in the back, but not in the front because that's going to keep it. And this is uh, a thicker yarn, so I use needles three millimeters so they go faster uh, but the point is I'm going to have one pair of socks to wear and I always see this um, in Instagram this luggage this old luggage is full of new socks so I'm going to do that <laughs> so the third pair of socks that I needed was this one and also mirror socks and this was a very good learning process uh, first of all, I tried to change the the dominant yarn when I was doing, and I do like. And when I did this so this pair of socks, I I really liked the effect. But after I did this, I like this one much better, because you can see much better the the yarn. And I used two hand spun yarns that I had, and and that was good. My problem with this first sock too is that when I finished this and I was already here on this, I looked and I said something is weird on this pair of socks. And I made a mistake because when I need color work, I need color work uh, Portuguese style. And, and I noticed that right here I made a mistake. So the solution for this would be um, to do um, what you say, um, duplicate stitch or not. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it as it is. I really like the socks. Um, they fit well. And, but the thing is, um, I like socks when you do color work on socks because they get warmer. But in this socks, the feet is not going to be warmer because they use the simple collar in both. Just the, the top, they had just a little collar work at the end. So it's okay. It's nice. It's done. It was uh, a learning process. So let's see. This one was interesting. Um, 
I like to go to Value Village, and whenever I go to Value Village, I go directly for the um, yarn part. Because like this, I found that Velo Village long ago, and this is mohair that I plan to make something for my daughter someday. <laughs> and and this I found it's a circular yarns, and it's um, let me see, 98.3 cotton and 1.7 elastic. But look at this, okay? This is the yarn. Look how stretchy it is. That 7% elastic is, is really good. I see many people uh, need socks with the cotton yarn. And I was thinking, how about flexibility? Because cotton doesn't have memory. But because of the 7%, it's really good. I still have to take this out. I normally don't like um, socks that are short. But the thing is, um because these are summer socks i thought it was okay and it it took me 50 grams to make this and i have a very little left over so i'm going to make another one and i'll keep one for me one for my daughter because this one she can put on the laundry machine and and wash it normally so i thought it was cool again a very small um pair of socks but a pair of socks so these were my four socks for December and I have put a picture on Instagram I am fiber nuts at Instagram too so I put a picture there these are my December socks then on February 6 we casted on our Maya dos Reis that is a podcast from um, Pontinhos Alventos is a Portuguese podcast. And what we did is last year to celebrate her 10 years, uh, we all sent her uh, 10 leftover skeins of 10 grams. And then it was a lot of work for her because she got all those skeins separate by color. And, and then she mm, sent it back to us. And these are the colors that I got. I used one yarn that I had to make the, the cuff and, and everything, the toe and the heel. But I used the rest uh, of yarns. I particularly like this one. This is for me and this is for me eye. I made it a little bit bigger here. I really like the, the, the way this one turned out. The only thing now is I haven't yet, because I want these socks to be together until December, I have to weave in all the ends of these socks. So that's the problem of using leftovers, but it turned out really great. I, I'm going to make more. So these are two for January. And then I cheated again. I got a yarn. This yarn is hand spun and it's crepe. A crepe yarn, they say it's the best for you to make socks because they are more resistant. And the way they work, you spin um, two singles Z and you spin one single um, S. Then you ply the two singles S, Z, uh, in the S way. And then you ply them again, the two sing the the plied the two ply yarn with the single that are now all S into a Z again. And that's a crepe yarn. And I think it would be nice if I had done it uh, thinner the singles, but it looks almost like a cable yarn. I don't know if you can see that. But it is um crepe yarn. And I got this from the book from Sarah Anderson. So there was a time I did it. And I did this in 2016 when we were traveling through the U.S. And, um, and I just used it now because I'm doing the 52 weeks of socks. So that's pretty good. And it's a good one to wear with winter boots because it's, it's big. The other thing that I finished that was unexpected. So, oh, 
yeah so as you see here I have only four I should have five uh, socks for for January and I finally I bought some yarn it is um, let me see here no it's not here it's in the living room so uh, this is um, cascade yarn and it's 80% merino 20% nylon and I got black and and white because I wanted to make this last year for for my um, knit along in October for the sock knit along from Nana another a Portuguese podcast so I finished now one foot and I have to start and finish the other so uh, theoretically I would have to tomorrow to finish it but it's okay uh, I just need to finish before I travel because this is a gift for my sister that she loves cats and this is for her when I saw the pattern it's a Birkebola pattern I also got the butterfly one and the bees um, and um, when I saw the pattern on Instagram I said I have to buy it and make it for my sister um, what I wanted to say about this these socks were really nice to knit finally knit and the reason is that um, the hue that she did was a little bit different like the first three stitches there she always does in knitting so you slip one and you do three two knits or or you do three knittings at the end and the other is the slip stitch uh, heel normally and also I had already done I think this is called the star toe that you knit um, five and two together then you, you need five rows without decreasing then four in it together and four rows without decreasing three to one and it turns out nice and what I like is that even though I had already done this it's not something that I normally do so so it's kind of cool to do something different so this is a working project but it's part of my four uh, I think January had four weeks I'm not a hundred percent sure now probably four weeks so I'm good <laughs> so I'm, I did this um, so this is my work in progress but it's also uh, my last sock of the month of January the other thing is that I watch a Brazilian um, knitting podcaster and she does some lives YouTube lives uh, on the TV and she decided to do a knitting challenge and it was every day last week from Monday to Friday we were together to knit the Niemeyer shawl so the pattern I think they're coming in English but it's only in Portuguese and it's for free in Instagram and you can do it if you like you can do it there because um, what you do is you have three um, three blocks of uh, lace to make right one and then the two the second one and uh, yes this is the right side the second one you repeat 19 times and then the design three you do once the the, um, the pattern three right then you catch uh, 158 stitches here throughout this and from there you do 84 and 9 and then you start doing when you get to the separation you slip one knit nine when you get there you get uh, knit two together or SSK so that you get to knit it together and you go and, and knit two more then you go up to 44 when you get to 44 stitches left uh, in this side then you do SK SSK or knit two together and then you need three and that's it and what I thought was cute is that at the top here what you do is you knit one uh, one uh, yarn over 
and then SSK. And this gives you this effect with the little holes as when you're doing the, the slip stitch in the beginning of each row, gives you a little hole too. So it all ends up together. Um, I decided at the last moment to, to knit this. This should be knitted with um, a number 5.5 needle, I think, with DK yarn. But what I had was hand spun. Um, so I got um, some of this was, so I got one strand of this two ply, 8% merino, 20% silk that I had spun long ago. And then I got uh, some alpaca, very thin alpaca that my friend Michelle had given me. And I did this because I wanted to um, take a little bit from the orange. But the thing is, um, I should know better that when you're doing lace, it's better not to use uh, a mixed collar. And I thought it was too much anyway. So I used just the alpaca on the top. And after I, I did uh, block it yesterday, and by blocking, I, I wet it, and then I just put on top of a towel and do the leads. I thought it turned out really nice. So this is also going um, to Brazil for me to give somebody. And it's, it's nice. It's a chalet, but it's really nice. And it was made um, throughout the week, in a week. The other progress, it's so funny because last October I got very, very stressed with a knit along that I was doing. And I said, I think I'm not going to join any knit along. And then um, I had the Meia dos Reis knit along that I did. And then last week I wasn't going to do that and I decided to do. And this is from the book, um, Norwegian book that I bought and I showed you last time. My dog chewed a little bit of it, but that's okay. And so Catarina from Von de Escada, Portuguese uh, podcaster, and André from Loft das Mantas, this, they also bought the book and they decided, why don't we do a knit along and then we could be on Instagram and talk about it but it's in Portuguese. So uh, this is what I did. And I used the yarn that came from Brazil last year. It's very soft. It's, it's almost, it's like um, the loop, I think it's loop yarn because, because this is um, singles. If you put too much twist on singles, they, the yarn will become We'll, when you knit, the yarn is going to have a tendency to go uh, to one side or the other, depending on where you put the twist, to the right or to the left, right? So it's like the loopy yarn. So this yarn, it has almost no twist at all, to the point that when I got the yarn, I was thinking I was going to spin it again in a thinner yarn because I thought it was too thick. So what happens, sometimes you are, <laughs> that one is warm. You are kneading it and then it comes out, but then all you have to do is just put it together. And this knits pretty fast. It's just that I stopped this to, to knit the shawl. Um, so I have done already one of the, um, the sleeves. And I had worked uh, more on the sleeves on this one, but then I noticed I used the wrong needle. And I'm doing this. And this has three colors. So um, this first one was uh, hard for me to do, to work with three colors, because I need Portuguese style. That means I always have the, the wrong side facing. And, and then I had my misconceptions on how I was going to need a three color. But because I like to have my, my floats caught, if you see my, the back of my sock here, I also needed this Portuguese style. The floats are all nice and, and caught, right? 
if you look here this is almost cute as a as the right side so so then I had to figure out a way to to do the three colors on this and what's working for me is I'm still needing Portuguese style but what I do is I keep so when you need Portuguese style it, Portuguese people use those um, pins that they put the wool through but I, I cannot use that I don't know why so I need with the wool on my neck and so what I do is so this is the thing then I put two going the opposite way I'm still getting a hang on it on how to work with my tension because the way you keep your tension going is you keep the the, um, the yarn within your fingers here and then you are knitting here it's a little bit complicated for me still but it's getting better I think that the the um, sleeves are a little bit better in, in terms of tension but still there is room for improvement um, I would like to see if I could finish this before the end of the week I don't know so so this these are the work in progress that I have I have one more and I didn't touch the rest so I'm not even going to show the rest so what I did is last this fiber I had just this gray and the white and I needed four colors for this sweater so I oops, so I have dyed one red and one yellow and I hope everything will be enough for for next week so the other good thing about us doing this um, organizing our our my room my wool room is that we decided to get a few shelves so I have that shelf there this is the alpaca that I used I used three threads of this alpaca for the shawl uh, but the thing is I'm keeping everything here so I have the bobbins that I'm working on on my spinning and I want to have the second just for spinning but it's here for now and um, the bottom is the three projects that I want to work that is the sweater for my husband uh, my fair isle cardigan and Paula's sweater so Paula's sweater I worked a little bit on it but very little as you can see I was here last podcast I just came here but it's it's going and I would just work on it on my way back from Brazil so so I have the projects that I want to work in this and what I like about this is that I can take it wherever I go and normally it's to be with me in the living room because I keep bringing things to watch TV and knit and they keep uh, getting on the ground and I don't like stuff on the ground I have an issue <laughs> so so this is good so uh, another uh, working project that I have is my Cormo uh, slash alpaca and I used for the first time my my woolly winder to ply the yarn I have spun this on my aura but I use my my Hansen to to ply and I was amazed like first of all it feels like it fits much more fiber here I didn't know how much I could go if I could go to the top so I decided to stop here and I still have uh, yarn to ply that hopefully I'll be able to ply this week somehow um, and my spinning wheel doesn't stay here but just for the show today I, I put it there um, so that's another work in progress I also have a spun this is a thicker yarn compared to that and it is because I want to do 
other cardigans from the um, from the um, the same book the linka uh, forgot her last name but the norway um card uh sweater books that i got that i want to knit so i am already started that i have three bobbins and i still have to go on so this is work in progress um everything that is there then I also I want I really want to do this Linka uh, book that I bought the, the book from Linka with all the Norwegian um, yarns I want to make them and I had this um, fiber it's a knit picks uh, wool of the Andes I think it is um, worsted weight and I think it's perfect for for them so so I did some dyeing I had already dyed purple and I had dyed red and I needed some colors and I thought I'm going to dye uh, light gray as in her pattern but then my light gray turned out I used the black dye that I have but it turned out like a ugly blue grayish blue something like that so I decided I was going to use uh, the Milton's um, food color black because I had dyed with it before and it all turned black but instead it turned purple but I didn't want purple because I already had this purple so I said um, I'm going to put yellow and I over dyed with yellow so it gave me a chocolate brown but it's not regular so some of them are more are more thin I have this orange that I had dyed to wear together so I need to dye a few more colors ah and this was uh, like I had left over of that black and I put this with more dye and it turned this gray this gray is not that bad but I didn't know at the time so because I wanted a lighter one so now I have a um, the brown ones that in some areas they are you can still see through a little bit of purple a little bit of green what I'm going to do and if you, you can see let me just put it back here so you can see the difference it's very clear so what I'm going to do is when I'm knitting I'm going to take one from one skein another from another skein and this way try to make something more homogeneous and this you can see how big the difference it is so I will work with two yarns at a time and hopefully this will make it not look that bad okay so now things that I have purchased <laughs> I should not buy anything else because as you see my stock is my yarn stash is big but um, my daughter came here last month and this month again this is great and um, we were at a store and I showed her the um, the mittens that I made to me hide the baggers meters bag baggers meter mittens ah, baggers mittens say this five times fast and um, that is the one that you have fingers here but you have the hood that covers the fingers and Mihai has a pickable um, uh, thumb and because I know it's hard to dye black it's one of the color black and red for me are the hardest ones to get right um, so I bought two and the initial idea was to blend them together so that they make if I do color work they they will be thick but my daughter is picky so <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I better <laughs> she's smiling now me picky? <laughs> yeah so I don't know if it would be better to to make one but I think I would have enough to make two pairs so this I bought to make her the the fingerless not fingerless but the beggar mittens then because I I wanted to try um, 
new yarns and that was a good thing from the um, from the Mea dos Reis because we got a lot of stuff from that people use in Portugal and one of the stuff is the Arnie and Carlos uh, yarn so I decided to get myself two to to use and this is the perfect knitting to take on the plane because it, you just go through it and so it's going to be my socks for February. I also got from the same place that was, let me just see here, it is Rosenhaven Yarn Shop. Um, it's in Ontario and, um, and they have nice yarn and, and this was 20% off at the time so I got this and I also got this mohair because in the book that I'm uh, that I'm trying to make the socks all the socks they have one pattern that they make stripes but what they do is they use um, like a one yarn and then they use two color mohair and the mohair that you knit together is what's going to make uh, the difference. So I do have a gray mohair and and I have this now. So I wanted the blue but they didn't have the blue anymore. So I'm going to use this to make uh, a pair of socks with the um, that I have to get. Then uh, we always go to Velo Village and I'm I bought all my dyeing pots there. Uh, there was a time I have seven crock pots to dye. Now I have only three. I gave the others away because I, it's perfect. You go there, you buy something and you're not um, embarrassed to use it because it was really cheap and it's being reused, right? So when I go to Velo Village, I check this kind of stuff. I, I go to the iron area. I check knitting needles. I bought a lot of knitting needles there throughout the years. Now I'm going more for the Chago than I, I buy them new. Um, and, um, and I got like fiber there. I got some merino fiber there and I got um, a linen wool blend that I haven't spun to today, but I got that many years ago thinking it was stuff to fill. And last time I went there, we don't have a good Velo village near here, uh, so I don't get much uh, here. But I went there and I got all these mini skeins that are perfect for other socks or, or other stuff like that. So, so this was really good. So I have a bunch and I paid, I think, $13 for all of them and they are all sock yarn so so I was happy with this then then life is good and I'm very grateful to be part of this community so last year I got a Christmas card from Mariana I had a total of three Christmas cards last year because nowadays we don't get any more like I remember in Brazil I would make a a decoration Christmas decoration with all the cards we got and I would send cards to everybody and then this habit stopped but I received from from Catarina do Von de Escada a card that is a, a post Christmas and New Year's party card and that was really nice so I, I was great and I got a uh, chai tea together so it was very very sweet thank you Katarina it was great I, I it really made my day um, and the funny thing is um, Mariana from Meias Marias a Portuguese podcast as you can see I watch a lot of Portuguese podcasts it's it's really a nice community and she said to me oh she cre she promoted a secret friend and I participated with two gifts so twice and I got my first gift that you saw last episode and and I sent my gift to 
uh, Maria Gabriela. And then I got back uh, from her a tea that is a green tea with um, ananas and that is pineapple and cinnamon. And I got this beautiful card. So this was card number four uh, with a little tree that I plan to use next year on my tree. And I thought, okay, so it's funny that I got her, um, my secret friend and I got her as my secret friend. But then last week we were here and we got a package at the door. And I said, what is this? It's from Portugal and it's from Laura Abrunhosa. And the funny thing is that I wanted to get this. This is an um, uh, indie dyer in Portugal. Uh, her name is Paula and her business Dye by Alfinete. And I have heard a lot about uh, her yarn because I see that and people sniff and everything. So I wanted to, to try one. I wanted to get. And when I got this, I thought, oh, I didn't get the yarn as my secret scent, but that's okay. I love tea, so I'm happy. And then I got this. So this is Maria Gabriela being so nice to me because she got my address when I sent her uh, my gift. And she sent it back to me. Thank you. It was totally unexpected and I'm so grateful for this because this little care is, is so amazing. It makes me feel so happy. And then I got my Dye by Alfinete, my Pospes, that is a sock yarn. I got uh, green tea and Miracle Tree. And what I really, really liked is that I got, oh, where is it? Well, of course I got a card that is very cute. And, oh, here. And I got this cup. And what I liked uh, a lot about this is that this is a cup with the Portuguese tiles. So Portugal is famous for its tiles. And so this is really a reflection of Portuguese culture. And whenever I send my gifts, I send a little bit of, of uh, maple syrup that is something common in Canada. So, so it was nice that they wanted to share their culture with me. I'm very grateful because that's what I tried to do and that's what I understand she did too. I love the cup, thank you very much, and thank you for all the caring. Um, the last thing, I don't have it here, but I we went to Grace Bridge yesterday, and I forgot to bring it here, and um, I got uh, a book from Fasse. I forgot his last name, but that's what I like about fruit and eating. From fruit and eating, I'm introduced to a lot of people, a lot of designers that I wouldn't have been to. So yesterday I was walking, it was a used uh, store, a book used store, and I was looking for some books to take to my niece, my grandniece, and um, I found this book from him. I think it's Ka Fawcett or something like that. And his uh, all his art is is about color work. I don't have the book here. It, it's in the house, but not here. And it's the book was originally from '93. If you have it, give it to me. And um, but the cool thing about it is that oh, here it is. Thank you, Filia. You're welcome. So this is and it is Cafe Facet. It is a '90s book. It was published again later on, but I, I don't think I, I would use to make this as a sweater, but 
look at the blanket. Let me see if I find the blanket that he made. And all these patterns, I think, would give beautiful blankets. So I, I am really grateful for fruit knitting because they introduced me to things that normally wouldn't call my attention. Like maybe it's too much for a sweater, but for a blanket to use all the fiber that I have left over here, it's great. So I don't know what I will need or when, but I bought the book yesterday because I was really happy. So in line with making this year a memorable year, we are planning, um, but life sometimes happens in the way and things don't happen. So we were planning to travel to Newfoundland in May 2020, and then COVID came and even our internal borders were closed. So we couldn't go and we, we wanted to be there in June, like leave here May, to be there in June uh, to see the, the icebergs and the whales. But uh, we just got our second shot in July, so we left in July and we came back in September. So, you know, sometimes you plan something, but it doesn't happen and, and it's okay. So this year, in line of making it a memorable year, I'm going to Brazil to be with my family this month, February. I'm going to be there for three weeks. And then uh, we are planning maybe in end of April or May to go to the Yukon. So if everything is okay and we are able to go, we'll take you along with us. You just have to be with us. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm very grateful. This room is much more, um, oh, I forgot. I also did some carding today because I'm going to try to make a second uh, attempt to make the, um, the cat cave. The first one didn't turn out very good. I saw a video on YouTube yesterday and, and I'll see if I can make some. It's very nice now because the way the, the room is, my I just push it back here, the, the carter, but I can move it so it, it makes it so easy. So it is, that's all. Um, thank you for being there. Um, thank you for subscribing. If you can hit the like button even better, but it's okay. Um, and I hope to see you soon when I'm back from Brazil. Big kiss on your heart and be happy. Bye-bye.